and they attended the youth uh, conference overflow so they're not here today and of course we have some families also who are away on vacation on holidays so let's just continue to lift them up in our prayers and uh, we have also have a visitor if you would like to say hi to Iona there she is Iona she is a friend of uh, sister Phyllis and of course the uh, Chris is here, <laughs> vacationing uh, to Canada, just imagine, vacationing to Canada, it's the other way around now. Praise God, hallelujah. God is indeed good, amen. And if you've been reading my email this morning, I sent a couple of email notices that uh, our dear sister Jasmine was rushed to ER in London, London Hospital. Uh, due to uh, stomach pain and let's continue to lift her up in prayer of course they are there to accompany their daughter Sophia who attended the over youth overflow so because Sophia is so young but wanted to join the overflow so the family went together in a hotel but unfortunately sister Jasmine was uh, rushed to the ER uh, think just today uh, so let's Pray for her. Amen. And of course, also our dear brother, brother Mark Yu. His grandfather in Taiwan died this morning as well. So let's just continue to pray for our dear brothers and sisters uh, who are, uh, of course, uh, uh, going through some tough time. Okay, but nevertheless, God is good. Amen. Amen. He's good and He's faithful and uh, probably, can, probably later we would like to share what uh, the Lord has done in our uh, 9 KAH food pack uh, yesterday. So, Brother Gay would maybe later uh, during the announcement, after the announcement, just give just a report. Anyway, let's prepare our hearts, and uh, I'm calling Brother Julio to open us in a short exhortation and prayer. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Uh, truly, it's already summer. <laughs> we can see the signs. It's already summer that people are on uh, vacation, people are on their uh, summer itineraries. So before we start uh, as, uh, as a tradition, uh, I will share to you a short exhortation. Uh, during summertime, we cannot help to discuss with my children, uh, Janelle and Natalie, and as a family, we always, uh, there's always a conversation when we come to uh, discuss things about summer, of course, and uh, we are talking about the migration of the birds, the, the geese are here, they're laying their, their eggs everywhere and in the parks, and then we also uh, discuss about uh, I remember butterflies because we had several times to visit the butterfly conservatory in Niagara. So one that amazes us is the butterfly called monarch butterfly. These monarch butterfly are very, very unique butterflies. Aside from being beautiful, you can see the color of their wings. There is also, it is also established that they also migrate from, I heard like some of them coming from Mexico and then they fly on springtime here in Canada. Imagine the travel they have. These are butterflies. And then they lay their eggs here and then they... So, like any other butterflies, we all have read and heard about them and how, and how God in His perfect and glorious will transforms something ugly into an incredible thing of beauty. A monarch butterfly thought to be one of the most beautiful of its species is a flying display of striking orange wings with black stripes and white spots. Napakaganda po if you see it in the conservatory. But the butterfly originated as something quite different, a tiny egg. They all come from eggs. After a period, the egg becomes a small caterpillar. Yucky. <laughs> the kids say the caterpillar is it's weird looking at worst. And at best, with colors to match what it will become. It's a small with many legs, and under a microscope, it has a monster-like appearance. The caterpillar soon forms a chrysalis we call cocoon, 
which protects the creature as it becomes what God intends. After a few weeks, a butterfly emerges from its protected environment. Its wings are crumpled and it has to hang until the wing, wings dry out and harden. And then, in its beauty, the butterfly takes wings and flies. It will lay its eggs and the cycle will begin anew. If we could choose just one, uh, many parallels can be made between a caterpillar's transformation into a butterfly and our Christian journey to holiness. We call our transformation the process of sanctification. If we could choose just one verse to communicate our definition of sanctification of believers, it would have to be the second Corinthians chapter 3 verse 18, which reads, And we all with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. We are changed from glory to glory through the sanctification. So sanctification is God's work in us. As in 1 Corinthians 6, 11, it tells us, through the Holy Spirit we are washed, sanctified, and justified. The process is sometimes, most of the time, experiential, means we experience it personally in our Christian walk. And at times we find ourselves in very difficult trials as we have been hearing in the past weeks. Trials, difficulties, sufferings. We need God's sanctifying work in us to help us erase the effects of sinful thinking. Sin permeates every aspect of our being, corrupting the mind and will so the natural tendency of our heart is to think according to the ways of the world. A hostile heart may search the scriptures to know God's word and yet be completely close to accepting his message. But God produces a metamorphosis like the butterfly and the Holy Spirit accompanies God's word to produce all we need in our sanctification and the sanctification process. Because of his work in us, we have the mind of Christ. 1 Corinthians 2.16 He equips us to love and obey as He sanctified us. The process of sanctification is an amazing act of mercy of God on God's part. For if we came to a complete knowledge of what we will know, once we get to full glory, you know, our heads would explode if we will, explode if we will know the, fully the glory of God. But Will it explode? No, not really. But we, in fact, need a glorified mind to fully comprehend what being Christ is all about. So in 2 Corinthians 3.18, my friends, we are already in glory, but not yet to the final degree. What amazing diving board into the Christian life. It's okay to plunge in because of God's work in us. God has given us His Spirit and His Word. In Jesus Christ and the scriptures he has not left us on our own to grow in his grace and knowledge so and to summarize sanctification is a it's mean uh, in Greek word it's hagiasmos meaning holiness or separation in the past God granted us justification in once for all positional holiness in Christ in the present Guide us as the, guides us to the maturity and a practical progressive holiness. And in the future, God will give us glorification, a permanent ultimate holiness. These three phases of sanctification or hold on holiness separates the believer from, separates us from the penalty of sins, which we were justified. Then separation from the power of sin to sanctification into maturity. And of course, we are separated in the presence of sins through glorification. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Thank you, Father God, for reminding us again, O oh Lord God, that we are in the process of sanctification, O oh Lord God. We are in the process uh, in your work, O oh Lord God, to holiness, to, to convert us from glory to glory, Lord God, so that we will become the image of yourself, O oh Lord. Thank you, Father God. Now it reminds us, O oh Lord God, that we should be, Lord God, uh, we should be confident, O oh Lord God, in our faith that whatever process we are going through, O oh Lord God, in your God's work, O oh Lord God, we are molded, O oh Lord God, into your image and that we will reach, Lord God, 
that glorification that you intend us to be, O Lord God. Thank you, Father God. Again, we praise you, we glorify in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And for the announcement, okay, we'll have the midweek service every Wednesday. This time is on May 29th at 7 p.m. Our, oh, our exhorter is Sister Jasmine Polidan. I believe God will heal her and she will be with us at this uh, midweek service. For your prayer requests, please email or text or call Pastor Rick, Pastor Mike, Brother, uh, Brother Arnell, or Sister Tess. If you have any uh, prayer requests, please do so. Don't be shy. Uh, they are uh, more than willing to get uh, your prayers and petitions so we can lift them up during our midweek service. Uh, okay, if, uh, there's an announcement for, uh, there will be a youth meeting, there will be an overflow recap, there will be uh, assessing and reviewing what have happened uh, yesterday, they were in London, uh, Ontario, uh, getting, uh, uh, participating in the overflow, so that will be on Friday, May 31st, 7 p.m., our teacher, their teacher will be Sister Nika Salvador and the host will be Brother John Newson. For those youth who are, or parents who are here, please uh, 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 extend the message to them and I'm pretty sure they will be emailed about this. For any question, please contact any of the youth leaders. Sunday service assignment, June 2nd, 2024. Our worship leader will be Brother Ronnie and Sister Jasmine, the Polidon family. Opening prayer will be uh, Pastor Mike Cortesa, and the word will be de delivered by Brother Keen Kwak. So our refreshment will be uh, Sunni and family and Sister Jonah. Any more? Online giving, and there's uh, again, we, we, uh, we acknowledge and we thank all those. Uh, uh, brothers and sisters who continually support the ministries of this church and uh, there's our, there are a few ways to give uh, most of you are using online giving through Tightly with that app on the phone and you can also uh, ask for and get an envelope at the back and drop it, uh, drop it at the drop box provided if uh, you want to do it the old way and, and yes that's pretty much it Amen so Let's pray first. Uh, let's pray for the service and for our Sunday school, the Sunday school, and, and the rest of the service. Let's pray. Father God, we praise you today as we welcome your presence in this sanctuary. We praise and thank you for this wonderful time to be with you and express our love and adoration to all the things you have done for us. May your spirit take control in everything we will do in this service. May your great power manifest in your church. Edify it so that your children will be blessed. Bless the worship team as they lead us in lifting and praising your name. Bless the Sunday school children as they encounter you again through the guidance of our teachers and volunteers whom you have chosen to look after them. Bless our giving. Truly, our giving is a privilege for us to take part in the ministries you have using for this church to expand your kingdom. Bless your preacher, Pastor Mike Corteza, so that we could clearly hear you today, speaking to us, teaching and molding us to your image. Anoint all of us through the power of your Holy Spirit, so we will receive the truth in your words with an open and obedient heart. Thank you, Father God, for your love. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your guidance. Receive our highest praises and worship this morning in the sweetest name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Before I call Sister Marivik Pratikin, we'd like to give us a short report on yesterday's event. Thank you, Pastor Rick. Um, I just want to thank the, uh, the, the men of the church, uh, first and foremost, for coming to uh, join me in, in, uh, in conducting the food pack yesterday. Uh, thanks, Sita Miller, for the uh, choice of treat. Uh, if I could request, uh, the kids just give out it all, okay? So maybe next year it will be two choice instead of one. <laughs> um, 
But, uh, you know, all in all, we have 90 kids from the high school in the area come and join us. Uh, it's, it's chaos, in a sense, you know, with 90 kids. Uh, but somehow, amazingly, the law just put all the pieces together. Uh, for me, uh, I rejoice in how the Lord used us to share His life and love with these kids. And our prayer is that even the little word that we share will, as the Lord promised, will not return to Him void, but will accomplish the purpose for which they were sent forth. Okay? And that life will be transformed for His glory. And that's why we do what we do, right? Is being the vessel of the law to sow His word into the life of these kids. Uh, obviously, not just here in Canada, right? Because most of the food will be sent to the Philippines for the feeding program. And we trust that the churches and the pastor will have the opportunity to do the exact same thing, right? To share that there is a God who loves these, uh, these kids and that their life has value and purpose and they too will be used by the Lord for His glory. Thank you so much for all the support. Thank you very much. Let's welcome David. Oh, awesome. um, just, just, uh, just so you know, um, there is there. Hopefully, will be a, a, a short video produced at some point. Uh, we refrain from taking pictures uh, because of privacy reason. So once a video is produced, maybe in a future week, we'll, we'll share it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. You're wondering, there are only two, right? Back to, back to basic. It's only one and a half. Praise the Lord. So, we need your help today. As we worship the Lord, um, before I start, will I just uh, read on Psalm 103? It says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the feet, who crowns you with a steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good, so that your youth is renewed like an eagle. Amen. Let's just bless the Lord. Bless His holy name. Hallelujah. Let's um, stand up and let's use our instruments, our hands, to uh, worship the Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus, and we bless your name. Thank you for this wonderful day. Amen. Lord, thank you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercy, the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you that we are alive to bless and to give all the glory that you deserve, Father God. We bless your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Sins of abundance flow, blessed be your name. Blessed be your name, when I found in the desert place, you will walk through the wilderness. Blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. Darkness goes as in Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name. 
You deserve the praise. 
serve the praise, worthy is your name. Be exalted now in the heavens, as your glory fills this place. You alone deserve our praise. You're the name of our Lord. your glory fills this place. You alone deserve our praise. You're the name of our Lord. Jesus, we bless your name. Jesus, 
stand on that cross of Calvary? Do you believe that He died for you? Do you believe that He took all the penalty of our sins upon Him? If you sincerely believe and accepted Him as Savior and Lord, then you belong to Him. And if you belong to Him, no one and nothing can separate you from His love in Christ Jesus. That's His promise. That's His guarantee and warranty of our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Only if you sincerely believe that He is the sacrificial lamb that God sent for you and for me. Would you Sing that again, the chorus, Jesus, I believe in you, with sincerity from your heart. Jesus, I believe in you. Jesus, I belong to you. The reason that I live, the reason that I sing, Jesus, Jesus, I believe in you. Jesus, I belong to you. You're the reason that I live, the reason that I sing with all I am. Lord, with all I am, we will worship you. We will worship you. The totality of who we are, the totality of our being, oh God, we offer back to you. It's a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto you, Jesus. We thank you for your love, your grace, and mercy that is always abounding in us. Thank you, God, Lord. 
that we can come together as a family to lift up your name in this place. Not just in, the, in this place, but in our own family, in our hearts, in our life. And we give you all honor, glory, and praises and adoration. Father, we just ask you continuously for your Holy Spirit to speak your word today with clarity, with simplicity, and yet with power that is coming from the Holy Spirit. For without your Spirit, we will never understand what you want us to understand. Touch everyone's hearts today. Minister to every needs. Maybe some of us came here this morning with burden in their life and their hearts. I pray, O oh God, Lord, that they will leave this place not, not the same anymore because they will encounter you in a very special way. Meet every need, touch every heart, occupy every mind, O oh God, Lord, this morning. Lord Jesus, speak your word through Pastor Mike this morning. Always we desire to honor you in everything that we do. Even today, we commit to you the rest of the service in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Let's give the Lord a clap of it. Please be seated and uh, let's uh, welcome Pastor Mike to deliver the word of God. Praise. Praise. Hallelujah. Good morning, church. Come on, you could do better than that. Good morning, church. Good morning. All right. That's way better. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm so, so excited to deliver God's word today. Praise God. You know what? I heard the story of a uh, young uh, um, believer. Um, his name was uh, his, uh, John. And John was just uh, water baptized. And then the following uh, week after the service, he approached his pastor. And he said, Pastor, could I ask you to pray for me? And the pastor says, um, sure thing. Um, why not? I, 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 I would be very happy to pray for you. And the pastor asks, what do you like me to pray for you? And the, uh, John says, Pastor, I would like you to ask God to strengthen my faith. All right? That's a valid uh, request. Don't you agree? Amen. Ask God to strengthen my faith. And the pastor says, are you sure? And says, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ask God to strengthen my faith. After a few moments, the pastor approached Brother John, just like any uh, Pentecostal pastor. He raised his hand to the and uh, put it just uh, above the head of uh, Brother John, and he said, Father, I thank you for the enthusiasm of Brother John. And right now, Lord, I pray that you're going to open the doors of trials and difficulties in his life. I pray that he would suffer. I pray that he would have problems after problems. I pray that he would have many obstacles in his life. Let's pause for a moment and think this too. Imagine yourself to be Brother John. If, if I'm Brother John, I might, I'll be thinking, whoa, I should have joined a different denomination. I should have just go to the church next door, right? It seems that it's counterintuitive, right? Because when we became Christians, we want that life would be easy, right? That everything would flow flawlessly. Everything would be good. But as I was uh, thinking of that illustration, it reminded me that maybe, just maybe, the pastor was thinking of a passage from James 1, James 1, 
So this morning, we're going to find ourselves in James 1, um, to be exact, the first four verses of James 1. Would you please uh, rise up and join me as we read the first four verses of James 1. Are you ready? All right. So everyone, not alternate the reading, just uh, we used to do, but let's read everything, all of the four, four verses together. One, two, three, all together. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the twelve tribes scattered among the nations. Greetings. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let's move on. Let perseverance finish its work so that may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. And that's God's holy inspired word. May he add his power and blessings to his word. Please be seated. And for today's sermon, I title God's word as the choice to rejoice. Would you read it with me? The choice, the choice to rejoice kind of rhyme and uh, and they place well the choice to rejoice hallelujah praise god and let me give you a short uh, preview of what we're gonna talk today first we're gonna talk about finding joy during trials interesting then it will be followed by developing perseverance amidst trials another interesting topic and we're gonna wrap it up with achieving maturity through trials. Are you ready for this? All right. Amen. Amen. And amen. Folks, the uh, book or the epistle of James is quite an interesting book. As a matter of fact, some scholars consider this as the epistle of applied Christianity. Epistle of applied Christianity because the book of James tells us how faith works, how we live out our faith, and that's the main theme in the book of James. And uh, often, many of us would, uh, would ask, what, do you, what is epistles? What's the difference between an epistle and a letter? Because some, some, um, some uh, Bible says the letter of James, others say the epistles of James, well, um, uh, an epistle and a letter are actually the same. Epistle is more like a fancy theological term for a letter. All right? Are you tracking me? Are we good with that? Yes. Amen. And every time we study a letter on an, or a epistle, um, it is important for us to understand who is the author. Second, we also need to understand who are the recipients or the audience of that letter, because it's a letter. Um, the, the letter or an epistle is written by the, by the author to specific people for a specific situation, right? So it is important for us to know who is the author, who is the audience, so who are the audiences, what was the situation when the letter was written, and why was the letter was written. So we're gonna yeah, we're gonna talk a little bit about that one, but you know what? Praise God that we don't have to go far because verse one gives us some clue. James, a servant of God, of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes scattered among the nation. Greetings. So James immediately introduced himself as the writer of the book, of the epistle, of the letter. But for the Bible savvy folks in there would say, Pastor, isn't it there are plenty of James in the New Testament? Actually, there are three James in the New Testament. There's the James, the son of Zebedee. There's James, the son of Alphaeus and James, the stepbrother of Jesus. So which is which? You know, brothers and sisters, 
church tradition tells us that James, the stepbrother of Jesus, is the author of the book of James. And there are plenty of evidences that points to that direction. Pastor, you mentioned James, the stepbrother of Jesus. Uh, what, did, what exactly do you mean stepbrother of Jesus? Did, did Joseph got another wife? Did Mary remarried after Joseph died? What's what, why, what's the big deal with stepbrother of Jesus? Why not just a brother of Jesus? Excellent question. You know what? Jesus and his siblings shared the same mother. But Jesus, if you remember, his father is God. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit. Did you catch that? Yeah. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit. So theologically speaking, the rest of the siblings are his step brothers and sisters. What? Uh, um, Jesus got brothers and sisters? That's a plus news to me. No, it's biblical. If you check Matthew 13 verses uh, 55 to 56, you mentioned the names of the brothers as well. It also mentioned the sisters of, of, of the Jesus. So uh, Jesus got siblings. Matthew 13, 55 to 56 for your reference. Hallelujah. Second question is whom he was writing. Whom was James was writing? It says here to the 12 tribes scattered among the nations. So 12 tribes, then pastor, then that's the Israelites, right? The 12 tribes. We're talking about the Israelites. So is this book relevant to you and me? Because we're not Jewish, right? We're Gentiles. Is this book relevant? Folks, let me explain. When the letter was written, the church was still young during that time. It is believed that it was about 10 years after Jesus was resurrected when James was uh, written. And during that time, the church was predominantly Israelites. They were Jewish. They were Jewish Christians. Of course, there were some Gentiles who joined the church, but majority of the congregation were Jewish Christians. They were Jewish believers. And that's where the Christian church started from the group of Jewish believers. Therefore, the, the, James was not only addressing the Israelites, the 12 tribes of the Israelites, but he was also addressing the church in general. Are you with me? Amen. 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 Now, the next question, what was the situation during the time? Friends, if you read the book of Acts, the believers were persecuted after the day of the Pentecost. And that's the very reason it says there, the 12 tribe is scattered among the nations. So after the persecution, during the time of the persecution, the believers, they spread out they disperse, and the theological term for that one is diaspora. Diaspora. Perhaps you have heard of diaspora. So they spread, and it was good because the church spread in different, different countries, different nations, and different lands because of the persecution. So it worked well with the church, and that's the very reason. It says twelve tribes scattered among the nations, and then he ends up with. Greetings. So it was a time of persecution. It was a time of trials. It was a time of difficulties for the believers. And that was the, the situation when the letter was written. Praise God. So what? So the author is James, the half of brother of Jesus, recipients, early church with predominant Jewish congregation. The situation, they were dispersed and persecuted. 
Praise God! So why don't we jump to our first point? Finding joy during trials. Let's read verse 2 all together. Consider it your joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds. Let's pause there for a moment. James 1 verse 2. Folks, isn't it counterintuitive? Consider it your joy whenever you face trials. Not only a few trials, it's trials of many kinds. For many of us, it does not make any sense, right? Why would we have that joy during the time of trials? It does not make sense. But I want you to notice the word joy. Have you asked yourself, why did the writer <coughs> use the word joy instead of happiness? It could be considered pure happiness, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trial of any kind. And the reason for that one is joy and happiness are not the same. Yeah, they are not the same, brothers and sisters in Christ. Happiness is based on our circumstances. Joy is based on our salvation. Amen. Happiness can be taken from us. Joy is eternally secured. In other words, happiness is temporary. Joy is eternal or permanent, as Pastor Rick says. James encourages us to shift, to shift, to change our perspective instead of viewing trials as obstacles. We are challenged to see them with positive perspective. Amen? Amen. James White, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, if you face trials of many kinds. No, nope. it says whenever, whenever, whenever means it's certain, <laughs> it's certain, brothers and sisters, it's not if. It says whenever, so the connotation is that everyone will go to trials of many kinds. Trials are inevitable. It's not only Brother Keen who would face trials. It's not only Brother Rodolfo who would face trials. It would not only be Brother Dennis who would face trials. How, how, how we wish that we could run away from trials, but the fact of the matter is, all of us will face trials. Could someone say all? all? All of us would face trials. Not only certain people, but all, no exception. Finding joy in trial does not mean that we ignore our pain and pretend that everything is okay. No, 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 no. That's not what it means when he says, consider it your joy. It means that we recognize that God is at work in our lives, even in the midst of our struggles. Don't you agree? Amen. It means that we recognize that God is work in our lives, at the background, even in the midst of our struggles. It means that we trust God is using our trials to shape us, to teach us, and draw us closer to Him. Amen. Amen. Amen? Praise God. Remember the story of Paul and uh, Silas in Acts 16. If, uh, um, if you're not very familiar, let me refresh you. So Paul and Silas, they went to the city of Philippi. Um, someone uh, asked me before, is uh, Philippi is the old name of the Philippines? And I said, no, because Philippi is actually in Turkey, right? So it's uh, far from, from, uh, from the Philippines, right? Philippi, Philippines, not the same, all right? So Paul and Sil Silas, they were in Philippi, and they were preaching over there. They were in missionary tour, missionary journey. And um, one day they met this uh, 
young slave, um, this, this girl who is a slave, and uh, she was uh, used as a, as a, um, as a uh, fortune teller. That's the, the, um, the term for the day. She, so her master used her as a fortune teller. So basically, she was just used as a money-making uh, um, business. And uh, one day, Paul was, uh, was uh, annoyed by, by this, uh, by this um, girl. And uh, he casted out that spirit um, that was prophesying. And consequently, the uh, owner or the, uh, the, uh, the, the the owner of that slave um, was so mad of Paul and Silas because they lost their business, right? Well, it makes sense, right? So Paul and Silas was brought to the magistrate and they were sued and then they were beaten up over there. They were flogged. Not only beaten up, they flogged, they, you know, that... Uh, that uh, tool that got uh, got rope up the end, and then there were some uh, spikes at the end. So they, they 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 were flogged, they were beaten up, and then they were thrown in a prison. If that's not bad enough, they were also chained in that prison, that ancient um, prison. You know, folks, the prison in the ancient Near East is not the same as we have today. The prison uh, during that time is a dungeon. Um, some of us are familiar with the Maplehurst uh, Correctional uh, Center over there. And I heard that the prisoners were pampered, right? Um, they got cheddar, they got a gym, they got spa, and they got steak Tuesday. Steak Tuesday, right? And they could pick uh, what kind of food uh, they prefer. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, no wonder, you know, uh, those people inside the prison, they prefer to stay inside the prison than being released, right? And I heard that once they release, they will do petty crime just to go back to the prison afterwards. True, true, right? So, so the prison or the dungeons, as I say, during, um, during Paul's and Celeste's time was far different. It looked like this one. It's actually a cave, a hole. So it's dark, it's stinky, it's super humid. And during the time that they were in the prison, guess what, what they were doing over there? They were praying, they were singing, they were worshiping the Lord. Hallelujah, they were having this worship service inside a stinky, dark, super humid prison. It blows my mind. How could they do that? They are wounded, beaten up, chained, hungry, weak, and yet they were praising the Lord. They were having a worship service. Folks, joy transcends circumstances and finds its source in the unchanging character of God. That's what joy is all about. Even in the midst of trials, there's still joy in the heart of the believers. Hallelujah. Let's jump to point number two, verse three. Let's read it all together. Because, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let's pause for a moment. And I love the word perseverance. So first, there's the joy during the trials. And when there's joy, it produces perseverance. So that's the next. Next level, right? Perseverance. Um, I, I checked the, uh, I googled it, I checked the definition of perseverance, and it says it is the quality of continuing with something even though it is difficult. It is the quality of continuing with something even though it is difficult. 
In other words, being resilient. Resilient. I hope I didn't make it more complicated by using the word resilient, but I, I, I think that's the, uh, the best, uh, the, that's the best synonym, resilient. You know what? It reminds me of the well-known theologian by the name of Kay Clarkson, and she asserts, let's read it all together, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger by the theologian Kay Clarkson. If you're wondering what's K, it's Kelly Clarkson. If it doesn't kill you, makes you stronger. Makes some sense, but Pastor Mike got a better paraphrase for that one, and my paraphrase is, what doesn't break you, builds you. Is it sound better? I'm not a theologian, but I could paraphrase it better. Don't you agree? Hallelujah. What doesn't break you, builds you. Praise God, hallelujah. Um, last uh, month, um, I attended a, a uh, coaching leadership uh, seminar in uh, Paris, Ontario. And uh, I was uh, with uh, some uh, pastors from different uh, parts uh, or different uh, um, churches in uh, Ontario and uh, one one of the uh, my teammates or um, uh, during the time his name was uh, Tommy um, and uh, Tommy um, the, and, and Tommy she said she's uh, a uh, she's uh, pastoring um, a church and uh, and I asked her Tommy um, what keeps you busy lately and then she uh, told me um, you know what, uh, Mike, I'm preparing for a 26-kilometer marathon in the U.S. this upcoming September. And it makes me think, I was curious, I said, um, preparing for a marathon for September, and it was uh, April, la last month, right? And. Uh, and in my curiosity, because you, you know, Pastor Mike, I could only run a one kilometer marathon. I have, uh, I need a couple of five minutes breaks in, in between in every, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in a one kilometer marathon, right? So he says, I need to prepare and go for a training for this marathon. And it's a standard to have a 20 weeks preparation. 4.5 months of preparation. He says, the first week, I will run five kilometers. The following week, I will add another kilometer. Until the 20th week, I'm prepared for the 26 kilometers dash. The process is grueling, she said. It involves a lot of pain. It involves a lot of fatigue and sometimes injury as well. I'm sure sis, our dear sister Nympha knows because she also runs in, in marathon, not only locally but in the U.S. as well. 20 years, 20 years, 20 weeks of training prior to the marathon. It surprised me because I thought during the time it's just, you know, they just registered that show up on the day of marathon <laughs> and, and run, right? But it does not work that way. The process of grueling, again, involves pain, fatigue, and sometimes injury. However, this physical challenge builds endurance. It builds endurance, making the athlete stronger and better and be prepared for the race. Friends, Similarly, similarly, our spiritual trials build perseverance, right? I was talking about the physical side, but our spiritual trials build perseverance, making us spiritually stronger and more resilient. So it goes back to the word resilient. It goes back to the word resilient. Again, what doesn't break you? Builds you. Are you with me? Amen. Amen. You know what? As I grow in faith, my perspective on trials also changes. When I was a young uh, Christian, 
Christian many years ago, every time there are problems, every time there are challenges in my life, the first thing I would do is to pray to the Lord, Lord, get rid of these trials, get rid of this problem, as up, as up, as soon as possible. And often that's our prayer, right? Often that's our prayer. Just get rid of the problem. You know what? I, I don't like problems. Who likes problems? Who likes who likes troubles? No, just Lord, get rid of it as up. And uh, on the surface, that sounds valid. Don't you agree? You know, we're not trying to fix it by ourselves. We leave it to the Lord. Tell the Lord, you know, you're all powerful, omnipotent God. You yeah, could do everything. Just, just get rid of it. Lord, fix this problem. Lord, remove the pain. Lord, put an end to this issue. Lord, take this out of my plate. Uh, if I could use uh, Brother King's uh, uh, praise. Take this out of my plate. I want to be, have a comfortable life with no issues. But as I grow in faith, I have a different perspective later. Instead of saying, Lord, remove the trials, asap, then I add it, if it's according to your will. If it's according to your will. If not, I ask you, I ask for your grace to sustain me. Because I know that you have a greater purpose for this. Amen. 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 I ask for your grace to sustain me. Your grace is not only enough. It's more than enough. Amen. That's a shift in perspective. Friends, let's be reminded that Spiritual fruits do not grow on the mountain top of comfort. They grow on the valley of hardship. Amen. Right? We're on the top of the mountain and everything is good. We don't grow spiritually. But if we are in the valley or the hardship, then that's the time we cry for the Lord. That's the time we rely more on Him. That's the time that we grow Mature in our faith. Hallelujah. Let's talk a little bit of achieving maturity through trials. Remember, our first step is seeing or seeing joy in our in our, in our trials. Second is um, to have that to have that. Uh, sorry, I forgot the term. Perseverance, that's the second step. And after the perseverance, it points to maturity, to trials. Let's read it all together. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. In the um, Greek uh, translation, often um, you, will, you, you will see the word mature, complete and perfect. They are used interchangeably for the very reason that the, the, the same Greek word is, very, is being used, right? So mature, complete, and perfect. Same uh, Greek word. Folks, trials are not random occurrences in our lives. They are part of God's redemptive plan for each one of us. Remember the story of Job, right? Trials didn't just happen out of nowhere. It was allowed by God. Even Satan would ask permission before trials come into our lives. Through trials, we are transformed. We become more mature, more complete versions of ourselves. The trials we face refine our character, deepen our faith, and give us hope. They help us to become the people God wants us to be. Amen belongs here. Amen. 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 And I wonder if I'm talking to someone right now who's going through fiery trial. I'm sure many of us 
many of us, including myself. Like problem after problem, trouble after trouble, you could barely keep your head above the water. It could be a family issue. It could be a relational issue. It could be a financial issue. It could be a health issue. It could be an issue at work. It could be a combination of all of these issues. <laughs> or if you are not facing trials at present, be reminded that life is full of unexpected storms. Peaceful times can quickly escalate into chaos. Remember the story of Job? He lost his kids. He lost his health. He lost his wealth on the same day. Therefore, it is important that you and I stand on the right foundation when these trials Amen. come to our lives. Amen. Right? It is very important that we stand on the right foundation. You might recall Mark 4. Mark 4, here we find Jesus and the Apostle in the middle of a storm in the Sea of Galilee. I'm sure all of us are familiar with this story. If not, verse 36, leaving the crowd behind, they took him along, just as, uh, him, Jesus, just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. Verse 37, all of a sudden, this is a quick change in the situation. Verse 37, a furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. So the water was coming in. Jesus was in the stern, in the front, sleeping on a cushion. Wow, that's amazing. Jesus got a pillow and, 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 and there's a storm and Jesus was suddenly sleeping. The disciple woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? Maybe this morning you ask the same question. Jesus, where are you in the midst of my storm? Don't you care about me? Don't you care that I'm in trouble right now? Where are you? But notice in verse 39, Jesus is the answer. Jesus got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. Friends, every life is going to be tested. Let me say that again. Every life is going to be tested. Every one of us is going to face storms in life. As follower of Jesus so again so make sure that you have the right relationship with Jesus could they, could they hear a big amen? amen amen because it's only Jesus can turn a mess into a message a test into a testimony a victim into a victor a trial into a triumph hallelujah let's clap for Jesus let me draw you our final analogy, and I'm, I'm going to shut my mouth afterwards. <laughs> All right, final analogy. You know, I, I, I know you folks like analogy and illustration. So, so imagine a sculptor, a master sculptor, working on a rough, unshaped block of marble. So that's, that's a marble, and that's the master sculptor. Okay, the sculptor begins with a vision. Oh. To the untrained eye, it might look like just a solid, unyielding rock, right? So, so if it's a, uh, for an untrained eye, that's just a piece of uh, rock, or a piece of marble, should I say, or a piece of stone. And, but for the sculptor, it holds the potential to become a beautiful masterpiece, right? We don't see it, but for the sculptor, there's a potential that stone will become a masterpiece. The sculptor begins with a vision in his mind, seeing beyond rough ex 
exterior that of what it can become with a careful, deliberate strokes. Careful, but deliberate, right? Careful, but deliberate strokes. This color starts chiseling away at the marble. Little by little, its strike of the chisel seems harsh and violent. It's not easy. It's hard and violent, right? You could see the, the, the way he's going gonna to strike that, that marble. So there's a jolt. There would be a chipping of large chunks of stone. It's messy. It's laborious process. It might even be destructive. Yet the sculptor knows that every chip and strike is necessary to reveal the beauty within, right? He knows, he knows from the very start. It's not, similarly our lives are like that block of marble. We face trials and challenges that can feel like we're being struck a chip. Day by day, day by day, these experiences are often painful and difficult to endure. It's not the easy times that we produce perseverance and strength, but the diff difficult moment that tests our faith is the one that builds our character. Each trial we face is an opportunity for God to mold us, to chisel away our rough edges and to help us grow. Like the sculptor, God has a vision. God has a vision for each one of you. And in his vision, he wants us to be molded into that image he wants us to be. God sees a masterpiece in you, Tatay Pedro. He sees a masterpiece in you, Brother July. He sees a masterpiece in you, Brother Lidor. When you're in the midst of a trial, remember the sculptor and the marble. Trust God is using these experiences to shape you into the person he created you to be instead of focusing on the pain and the suffering, but focus on him and to the future person you would be. Be inspired because God's ultimate goal for you is to have the image and likeness of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that's his masterpiece. Friends, be inspired because God's ultimate goal for you is to be changed to Christ. Brother Jojo talked about about sanctification. We are being changed from glory to glory to glory to glory until the time that we will have the perfect image of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is the glorification. Glory for Jesus. Hallelujah. Would you pray with me as we close? <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you for the great for your grace is sufficient enough, Lord God, as you have said in the Bible. For every trials and difficulties that we encounter in life, Lord God, may we be ready and willing and willing and patiently be in the process of testing, Lord God, knowing and believing that you allow these circumstances in our lives because you have a plan for us. Give us a joyful heart during this time, Lord God, and we open our hearts and we, we open our, our minds for, for these uh, trials, Lord God, because we know, Lord, that you allow these uh, things to happen in our lives because you have a greater purpose behind it. Thank you once again for your word, Lord God. We give you back the praises and thanksgiving, and we put our trust and faith in the one and only Messiah, and his name is our Lord Jesus Christ. And all God's people say, Amen. 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 Thank you. God bless you. Hello, my test. Wow, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Are you blessed? Amen. I'm so blessed. You know, uh, last Sunday, we thought that uh, we already had concluded this series of testing. And today, we had a bonus episode 
of that series of preaching and I do believe uh, everything God is in God's hands, God's in God's plan, everything is in God's plan, amen? You know what, brothers and sisters, you and I are all works in progress. None of us is finished product yet. And the completion of God's masterpiece in us is when we see Him face to face or when we leave this planet Earth, of course, and we, we will all receive the, the glorified body when we see Him face to face. But while we are here on Earth, like I said, none is a finished product yet. And because God loves us, because God cares, remember, God loves you. God cares for you. And because He loves you and He cares for you, He's got ways of doing it on how He will show that love. And that includes testing and trials and tribulation. And, 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 but again, the bottom line is that even in during those situations, whatever happens our way, God is with us. He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. Amen? And uh, I like what Pastor Mike said. God sees you as a masterpiece. And because you are a masterpiece in His eyes, He will start working in your life, chipping away all the debris and the unwanted pieces in our lives so that eventually we become like who He is. That's the bottom line. That's His goal. Amen? Amen. And so again, let's thank the Lord for a powerful soul message of the Lord. And uh, thank the Lord for the life of Pastor Mike. Would you stand with me and let's just conclude this gathering? Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord God. All glory is yours. All honor is yours forevermore. You're indeed, Lord, uh, sovereign over our lives, O oh God, Lord. You orchestrate everything, O oh God, Lord, even in the preaching of your word. Lo and behold, we thought that uh, we just concluded the series on testing, but Lord, you have given us even the bonus, O oh God, Lord, of, this, of the message today about choosing to rejoice. As Paul said in Philippians 4, 4, said, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Lord, you're, you're commanding us, you're instructing us to rejoice, no matter what happens, or whether good or bad, because... You are in control. You are sovereign, O oh God. You allow things to happen for a reason, O oh God, Lord. And that is for our benefit, to mature us, and to equip us, to strengthen us, O oh God, in, the faith, in our faith with you. Lord Jesus, thank you for the message that you've spoken to us today through Pastor Michael, God. Thank you, Holy Spirit, O oh God, Lord, that once again you powerfully deliver your word, O oh God, Lord. And Lord, I pray, O oh God, Lord, that each one of us, who may be going through a lot of problems, situation in life, or God may be in a, in a form of sickness, in a form of financial hardship, maybe in a form of uh, difficulty in, in a certain relationship, oh God, Lord. I pray, oh God, Lord, that use these uh, situations in our life to continue to mold us, to transform us to the person that you want us to be, oh God, Lord. And again, thank you for the words, O oh God, that you've spoken to us today, O oh God. We give you all glory, honor, and praise. And now to him who is able to keep us from falling, especially in this troubled world, O oh God, Lord. Many things can happen around us, O oh God, Lord. But you are continuously keeping us from stumbling, from falling, O oh God, Lord. And you will be able to present us faultless. In the presence of your glory with exceeding joy, you will receive us unto yourself, welcoming us into your arms, O God, Lord. And while we are here on earth, we are giving all the glory to God, our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever, and everyone will say, Amen. God bless you all.